In this video, I just want to really make sure that you know that you can apply the Friedman's ANOVA to data derived from a within subjects factor with just two levels. It's kind of like the one way within subjects ANOVA. Most people seem never to use it when there are two levels. They use the paired sample t test. And then when they have three levels or more, they'll use the one-way within subjects ANOVA. The difference is that the paired t-test and the one-way within subjects ANOVA will give you exactly the same p-value. However, in the context of non-parametric statistics, people typically use the Wilcoxon sign rank test or the sign test to test the difference between two levels in a non-parametric context in a within subjects design when they could also use the Friedman's ANOVA. It works just fine. And in fact, you could potentially get more statistically significant results with the Friedman's ANOVA over the Wilcoxon sign rank test. And so just to remind you, this study was presented earlier in the chapter relevant to doctors estimating their confidence at completing a procedure on a scale of 1 to 4. And their corresponding supervisory doctors rated their competence on a scale of 1 to 4. Now, based on the Wilcoxon sign rank test, the null hypothesis was rejected. So just to remind you, put confidence, competence, and make sure Wilcoxon is selected, and click OK. And here are the results. I never showed the p-value beyond 0 0.001, so I'm just going to do that now. Increase that to 10 decimal places. I've already showed this in the textbook earlier. So we have 0 0.000007. Now I'm going to test the hypothesis with the Friedman's ANOVA. So analyze non-parametric tests, k-related samples, and I'm going to put the two levels in the test variables, and I'm also going to click on Kendall's W. That's another advantage of using Friedman's ANOVA, is that you can estimate an effect size called partial eta squared, whereas with the Wilcoxon sign rank test, it's not as direct to estimate something like partial eta squared. And so instead of actually calculating this with the statistics derived from the Friedman's ANOVA, you can get partial eta squared with Kendall's W. In fact, Kendall's W is, as it turns out, partial eta squared in the context of a one-way within subjects non-parametric statistic. So click on OK. Now here's the Friedman's test, also statistically significant. And I'm going to push out this decimal place. To and we have P equal 0 0.00. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so the Friedman's ANOVA rejected the null hypothesis with greater confidence because the last number here is 1, whereas with the Wilcoxon sign rank test, it's 7. So it's a, you know, it's a fair bit more significant. And in some cases, you'll find that the Wilcoxon sign rank test might give you a p-value of 0 0.055. And then when you do the Friedman's ANOVA, you get 0 0.045, something like that. So be aware that the Friedman's ANOVA can be a more powerful statistic. And you can also estimate Kendall's W within the Friedman's ANOVA framework, which corresponds to partial eta squared, whereas you don't get that as directly with the Wilcoxon sign rank test. So several advantages to doing a Friedman's ANOVA. It might not always be more powerful than the Wilcoxon sign rank test, but it just might be in a lot of cases, and you'll be missing that opportunity if you don't know that you can use it in cases with just two levels in the within subjects factor.